what flows in a river is something that's essential to all of us. And when you see it in that dynamic form going by, you see it supporting all of that life. It's a very primal sensory experience. The water doesn't stay still. It's always moving. So when you think about rivers, you have to think about the whole landscape. And you have to think about all the communities, the people upstream, the people downstream, how they affect each other. The wild and scenic designation really is a source of pride. It's something that we see as a point of identity and it means that our river really is a national treasure. The original wild and scenic rivers in the western part of the country were rivers that were not much developed and largely on federal land. But the rivers in the east have recovered a great deal so that now these rivers have become valuable scenic and recreational assets again. The Wild and Scenic Rivers Act was a big umbrella but it took a long time for the Park Service to figure out how to use it to protect rivers where you're not going to create a federal park, where it would be inappropriate to buy or manage the private lands. How do you deal with those rivers? And that was really the problem that um, Partnership Rivers set out to solve. The whole area is very special, but the gem of the area which draws people from all over the country is the river. Parts of making a case for wild and scenic designation is demonstrating that the river has outstanding resources. There's a tremendous trout fishery, cold water fishery here. I fish all over the place and everybody has heard of the Farmington River. And you see license plates from uh, New York, New Jersey, all over the place. You can kayak, you can canoe, you can go tubing. When people recreate on the river, they get to experience it firsthand and they get to understand why it's important to protect it. So there are tens of thousands of people using this river for recreation and all the auxiliary businesses that are supported by anglers and paddlers. All of these different interests really needed a mechanism for working together. And the wild and scenic designation seemed to be a really good way to do that. So Mickey has volunteered with us since the beginning. When we all meet together, we're asking one another, what are we going to do to promote river outreach and education? The Farmington River is a very special place. Becoming part of the River Steward Program is just protecting an area that has given me so much over the years. We help with invasive removal. Also promote education to the youth in the area. We do some cleanups. We have a very strong spirit of community. People who are retired will go out and walk the riverbanks and clean it up. So it takes a lot of different folks. There's also resource stewardship, like our water quality monitoring program. We are sampling 15 different locations on the upper Farmington. We check for bacteria and chemicals and minerals. This is a project that's been going on for at least 10 years. Our hopes are to engender more people helping us out, working to fulfill that management plan. We need everybody to become a steward of the Farmington River. One really great example of how people bring different sensibilities to their appreciation of a river is the Farmington River Quilt Project. Favorite scenes and favorite spots along the wild and scenic stretch of the river portrayed as quilts. 
They really capture the essence of the river and shows communities all over the state what an incredible wild and scenic river we have. So it's serving as our ambassador in a lot of new places. Our rivers flow through a patchwork of different kinds of ownership. There's U.S. Fish and Wildlife Refuges, the National Park, but there's also a lot of private property, state conservation land, roads, all kinds of things that make it actually pretty complicated to manage a river. There are some businesses that are located along the river. There are private homes along the river. The towns own land along the river. There's all these sayings, all these colloquialisms. Two heads are better than one. Um, it takes a village. When we all get together and find that common ground, we really do work much more effectively to protect this area than we would if we could work individually. I love rivers, and they all have their own personality. The Assabet is a very intimate experience. I think it's a beautiful river, and it's a hidden treasure for Massachusetts. You never go on this river without seeing great blue heron, turtles, frogs, snakes. It's an osprey. You forget that you're less than an hour away from Boston. This wild and scenic river is the closest wild and scenic river to a metropolitan area. On a weekend, you'll see a lot of people using our rivers. That is new. It didn't used to be that way in recent history because the rivers were very badly polluted. The Assabet River had five major wastewater treatment plants discharging treated sewage, and our work has been to help clean that up. Just a little bit upstream was where it got really kind of gross. But because downstream we had wild and scenic, that gave us some good leverage for protection from those polluters upstream. So it's a really wonderful tool for people in the community who want to clean up their rivers. We've been able to do that because wild and scenic river designation allowed for there to be funding to collect the data to make the decisions so that investments can be made to clean up the water. We have some pretty serious invasive plant problems on our rivers. There we go. This is what you see on the river. You just see this little bit and they hang in the river and then all this will break down in the fall. So it can have a negative impact on the dissolved oxygen content. So you, you reduce your native fish because many of the native fish need a little higher dissolved oxygen. There were so many of these water chestnuts in here that you could not possibly remove them by hand. You had to use a big piece of equipment. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service formed a partnership with the town of Lincoln, the Concord Land Conservation Trust, and the town of Concord to purchase an aquatic weed harvester to pull them out of here. Working together, we've been able to have an impact that we could never have had otherwise. We're part of a watershed that's three rivers. The Sudbury and the Assabet rivers meet in Concord, and at their confluence, the rivers turn into the Concord River. This place has a very rich history. It has one of the highest concentrations of Native American artifacts in all of New England. And then the American Revolution got started right here. The Minutemen went right over the old North Bridge. So this is really ground zero for the American Revolution. This whole area has got a lot of historical significance. So one of the things that the River Stewardship Council does is we review projects that are either federally funded or where there's a federal permit that's necessary. This is Lee's Bridge. We worked really hard to recreate the bridge the way it used to look, but meeting current design standards. I love working on rivers because they connect things, they connect people, and sustain them because we need the water, we need the wildlife, we need the peace and quiet for our minds and our souls and our children. Communities that have been living in harmony with these rivers for hundreds of years 
they've got some strong feelings about what's important. So if you bring that in and integrate it into the planning from the get-go, you're much more grounded in a reality that's going to get you a good product. Wild and Scenic sometimes suggests to people that the river is going to be considered wild and pristine and therefore you won't be allowed to do anything on it or around it. That's really not the case. It's recognized that these rivers are within towns. They have historic uses and that is respected. It's brought some money, it's brought some attention, and it's brought the communities together around the rivers in a nice way. It certainly wasn't a land grab by the federal government. Musconnect Con is a Lene Lenape word. We think it means a meaning place of clear flowing water. I grew up with the Musconecon River in my backyard. That's why I get engaged and excited about protecting the river. It's a great way to talk about the history that you just absorb growing up in a place. Back when there wasn't electricity, people needed a way to get power. And the best way of getting power was from the river. And people built grist mills to grind their grain. None of these dams were used to prevent floods. Some of them are hazardous and they could breach. We work in partnership with dam owners who have a high hazard dam. And if they would like the dam moved, we're a way to bring in outside funding to help remove that dam. We've been restoring migratory fish passage. So fish like shad, alewives, other river herring, and eels can come back. So the shad came back a year after we took down that dam. The shad are an iconic fish in the Delaware River watershed. So when the shad came back, it drew a lot of attention. Great success for the river, and it's a great way to restore the environment and really meet what the Wild and Scenic River Act is about. To see a fish that hasn't been here for hundreds of years, that was probably one of the best feelings I've had in my career. Are you catching anything? My dad got salt. Trout? trout? Yeah. This is a rainbow trout. They're moving the dam, so it's very nice now, right now. The river is moving in a direction that it needs to move in terms of recovery. You know, this is the culmination of ecology and engineering um, coming together on a project. And I like to stand there and listening to it. It's relaxing. That water just, it's just relaxing to hear it go through there like that. It looks just like a Rocky Mountain stream. It flows the way it's supposed to. I don't think anybody in a hundred years has seen it flow like this. It's gorgeous and we love it. We have five staff, two are full-time, three are part-time. Even though we're small, a local article called us the mighty MWA because of what we've been able to accomplish. And it's through having that base level of support, that capacity that comes from the Wild and Scenic Act. Congress makes it eligible for designation but for it to actually go into force, the local communities need to agree to it. It's a way of exercising the pride that people feel about where they live, and it builds an identity to not just the river, but the region overall. I think we're seeing the return of rivers, even our mill towns now are turning back towards the rivers and making them a centerpiece, making them an asset instead of a liability. And that's very exciting to see. The river is never going to go back to an untouched, pristine state. So the question is, what choices are we going to make in shaping the future of the river? Rivers cross boundaries. They're often used as a dividing line between boundaries. It can result in a fragmented way to look after a river and care for it. And what the Wild and Scenic Act does through creating the River Management Council, it creates a more holistic view of the river overall. Everybody wants clean water. They want to preserve the recreational opportunities. They want to preserve the wildlife. They want to preserve the historic character. They can't do these things alone. It's gonna to need to be a collaborative effort with state, federal agencies, nonprofits, 
a lot of the draw of Partnership Rivers is that we bring these parties together to preserve that resource and make the most of it for future generations. Every time we used to go out in a boat, this guy here was the only one that would catch trout. All we catch was weeds. <laughs> we got the, the hawks, the... Right. What's that long-necked bird? Oh, heron. Heron. We had a couple of them in here. Yeah. Dick Big don't like too. him because he's got a oh. pond. They go after oh, his fish. <laughs> they eat your fish, yeah. They want my fish. <laughs> I can sit on my deck in my yard when the water's a little bit higher, and I, I love to hear that ripple effect. When I check on him, as he's listening to the ripples, he's usually asleep. No, oh, come on, I'm not sleeping. How can you sleep listen to the ripples of the water? Put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs>